So in today's lecture, we will be exploring the topic stress and stress management. So before we begin with the lesson, we will go through the syllabus. We will be covering the topics, uh, the meaning of stress, its basic nature. Then we'll be studying about stress as a process. Okay. Then the different types of stressors, the negative and positive stressors, two important models of stress, the general adaptation syndrome, which is Hans Selye's model and the cognitive appraisal model. Okay. Then we will be studying about the common causes of stress, the situational and the dispositional um, relation between stress and performance. We will be studying in details about what burnout is. We will be studying about stress management, the ineffective and effective strategies of handling stress. And lastly, about how defense mechanisms as the ineffective strategies. And lastly, we will be studying about the effective lifestyles and the stress cycles, the distress and the wellness cycle. Okay, so starting off, what is stress, right? What is its basic nature? So what do we actually understand by the word stress, right? We all know that stress is something which is as old as humankind itself, right? Ever since life started, stress started, right? So stress is something which is uh, very variable, right? What is stressful for me might not be stressful for you, right? For a small child, uh, if, a do if, a, if he realizes a dog barking at him, that is stress for him. That is a stressful situation, right? Um, so different people have different, uh, different perspectives towards stress, like what stress is for them. So stress has been uh, described and defined by different scientists by using different uh, theories and different approaches, right? Some have called stress as a mental condition. Uh, some have uh, called stress even as a disease, while the rest of them um, have used uh, various theories to describe stress. Okay, some of like two main theories which have described stress are the response-based theory and the stimulus-based theory, right? We can see in the slide, the response-based theory is basically the theory which conceptualizes stress as a body's physiological reaction to any demand, right? So the body's physiological reaction. What is stress? Stress is the reaction, right? So in this case where a dog is barking at the child, what is stress? According to the response-based theory, it is the child's reaction to this um, particular change in the environment, right? So if the, if the child starts crying or the child starts running, here his reaction is the stress, according to the response-based theory. Inversely, what the stimulus-based theory says is that stress is the demanding or threatening stimulus which causes certain reactions, right? So in this case, the dog barking, which is a change in the environment, which is a change in the equilibrium, is your stress, right? So in the response-based theory, the child's reaction, running away or crying, that was stress. While in the stimulus-based theory, the dog barking is itself the stressor or the stressful situation. Okay. Next, uh, there are some important definitions of stress like McGrath in 1976 described, uh, defined stress as something which is involved in environmental situation that is perceived as presenting a demand which threatens to exceed the person's capabilities and resources for meeting that demand, right? So here, what he basically uh, try, uh, is trying to explain stress is as um, an environmental situation which is demanding in nature, okay? So this particular situation is demanding uh, a change in the environment and it is threatening the person, the individual, to increase his efforts, to increase his capabilities to meet that demand. That is what is stress is according to McGrath. Next definition is about Humphrey. Humphrey described stress as something which can be considered as any factor, any factor acting internally or externally that makes it difficult to adapt. Okay, so any factor there are certain points which you need to remember any factor acting internally or externally. Okay, so 
that makes it difficult to adapt okay so that makes the individual that makes the person difficult to adapt to the situation and what it does it induces increased effort on the part of the person right so similar to what megrat said right so it um, it actually instigates the person to increase his or her capabilities his or her efforts in order to maintain that state of equilibrium in order to restore the imbalance which has occurred in his or her body okay so these were the two main definitions now hans selye in 1974 discovered that stress can be of two types okay so uh, usually when we think of stress uh, like the word stress is Uh, for majority of uh, the time stress is considered something uh, which is negative right but not always hans selye discovered that stress is not always negative it might be positive as well okay so the kind of stress which is associated with positive feelings optimal health and performance three important things the stress which is associated with positive feelings okay some uh, a particular stressor which is giving me positive feelings for example um very a uh, very very relevant example is the lockdown period right all of us have actually um, you know uh, discovered how how boring and how tedious this lockdown period has been for us right so in this lockdown period if for suppose we are actually craving for some work a particular individual is craving for some work and he gets some work he has been given uh, allotted a task okay now at this point of time because he was craving for some work this particular instruction or this particular uh, demand becomes uh, a source of positive feeling for him right that person feels good if he has been uh, asked to do some work okay so this kind of stress is what it is a positive stress or eu stress okay and then it is this is stress which is related to optimal health okay so this kind of stress is actually benefiting the person and is allowing him to uh, maintain his optimal health and performance okay so eu stress is something which is actually uh, increasing one's performance is enhancing one's performance this kind of stress is eu stress right uh, even uh, in a student's life like different students have different uh, ways of studying but there are some students who actually uh, wait for the last moment to study okay and there are some students who study f- like they divide their work over a period of time okay now the students for, uh, who divide their work for a period of time exam is actually an a u stress for them it becomes a motivation for them to study okay now for the students who are studying during the last minute exams become distress for them a negative stress for them because that induces uh, you know a negative feelings within him or her okay so this kind of negative stress is what distress okay distress distress actually exceeds the optimum level okay so the moment it exceeds the optimum level it becomes a negative force it is no longer a positive force and it begins to degrade one's performance okay like we can see in the graph how the performance is increasing along with the level of stress until and unless the person is in his or her comfort zone the moment uh, he or she actually uh, moves out of their comfort zone they enter the distress phase okay and then ultimately the graph goes down and the performance definitely is being degraded moving on to the two most um uh important uh i would say models of stress hans selye's general adaptation syndrome okay so general adaptation syndrome was basically uh, given by hans selye in 1974 which um, described uh, stress as a process okay so he uh, basically divided stress into three stages the first stage of alarm the second stage of resistance and the third stage of exhaustion right so what happens in the first stage of alarm as the name suggests itself this is the stage when the body is alerted to a particular stressor right in the middle of the night a man wakes up and realizes his house has caught fire so his body is alerted he has realized that there is a stressor in his or her external or internal environment okay so his body gets alarmed and he needs he needs some sort of energy some sort of uh, you know um, reaction mechanism in order to 
um, restore the imbalance which has been occurred. Okay, so this stage of alarm is the stage where the body gets alerted, where the body realizes or recognizes a stress in his or her environment. Okay, so it, there are some immediate uh, reactions that take place. Maybe the person starts sweating. The person maybe there's increase in heart heart rate or increase in blood pressure these kinds of symptoms right when we see a person when we as a person when we experience these things we we experience that there is a stressor in our environment okay then when when the body is finally alerted and has realized that there is a stressor the body moves on to the stage of resistance right in the second stage what happens there there the body tunes up to react to the stressor Okay, so now the body has already realized that there is something wrong in the situation. Now he has to, uh, he has to act. He has to react to the situation. Okay, now the organism starts to think of ways to cope with the changes brought about by the stimulus, right? And why he does that? Because he wants to attain normalcy. Okay, so there are certain hormonal responses that take place uh, during this phase, right? What happens? The body has already perceived the changes. So now the person tries to assess his or her abilities. Okay. Whether he is being able to, uh, you know, uh, be, uh, cope up with the stress or not. He starts assessing. Okay. And there is a, the, the body's defense mechanism is activated. Okay. And different types of hormonals are, uh, hormones are released. Adrenaline, noradrenaline, adrenaline. These things are released in order to. Uh, cope up with the situation and then when the body has been using this mechanism to deal with the stress uh, at one point of time what happens is definitely the resources are being uh, very recklessly used the body's resources are being used so definitely a time will come when the resources will get depleted right so the then the body enters the stage of exhaustion right at this stage the person is no longer able to adapt to the stressor what happens Definitely, if something is being used so recklessly, a point will come when the body will collapse, okay, and the body will fail to react to the situation anymore. And what happens is that the body collapses, the body uh, feels burned out, okay, and the body's ability to resist, resist the situation becomes depleted, right? So the body feels burned out and feels exhausted and this happens basically because there's there's a mechanism behind this, right? In the resistance stage, the hormone called cortisol breaks down proteins and fats to um, increase the glucose level in the body, right? Because the body needs energy. Now, because of the this um, breakdown, what is happening? The protein is the protein and fats are being break, break, broken down. Right, but protein is also required by the body's defense mechanism to uh, to increase uh, the number of WBCs. Right, so what is happening that when excessive amount of protein and fat is being broken down, the body falls short of the uh, of the necessary proteins which is required. Right, so the body's defense mechanism is being adversely affected, and then the body enters the stage of exhaustion. So this was my general adaptation syndrome moving on to the next model which is the um, cognitive appraisal model of stress uh, which was proposed by Lazarus and Folkman now this model of stress basically focuses on two kinds of appraisals of a stressor the primary appraisal and the secondary appraisal okay so this model basically wants to um, uh, wants to state that uh, for any kind of stressful situation, the body adapts to two phases. The first phase where the body perceives the stress and the second phase where the body reacts to the stress. Okay, something similar to the general adaptation syndrome, um, right? So the first phase is the primary appraisal. Okay, and what does this phase involve? This phase involves the judgment about the degree of potential harm or threat to well-being that a stressor might entail. Okay, so here the body is actually perceiving, perceiving and is trying to assess the degree of harm that the stressor might uh, entail upon one, one person. Right, so... Um, now here the individual perceives the situation to be either unimportant, good 
or threatening to his her well-being three things either if i am um you know introduced to a stressor so i will view this stressor in three ways either i will find that no this is something very unimportant okay something a very minor stressor which i feel is unimportant no this does not stress me out or the other way around uh, we studied about eu stress okay so we might think that this stress is a positive stress for me so this is good and then the third thing this might be a threatening situation for me okay it might be threatening to my well being so these are the three ways in which i will perceive my stress okay now it's important to understand why we perceive these why why do we perceive stress in these three ways why if we are perceiving a particular stress to be harmful this indicates that it has caused some sort of damage to me right if i see um uh if i uh, if i have uh, as a kid i've burned my hand once okay i burned my hand in hot water now next time when that kid sees that hot water he knows that this is something which is a it it is a stressor for me because it might cause me harm okay then if i if i am perceiving a particular stress stressor to be threatening what does it indicate it indicates the future damage it might cause okay maybe i have not been introduced to this stress but i have heard or i have seen other people uh, facing this stress okay so i am thinking about the future damages that it could cause to me and if i perceive a particular stressor as a challenging stressor so this indicates that i am taking it as a positive stress right you stress because this might motivate me to work harder okay and if lastly if i am um, perceiving a particular stress to be harmless it indicates that he she might have dealt with it earlier right there are some sort of stressors which we have already dealt with earlier so when we are introduced to such stressors we find it harmless because my body is already adapted to such stressors okay so this is the primary appraisal then we move on to the secondary appraisal so the the perception part is done now the reaction part starts okay now the body will deal with this situation how does the body deal with this situation the individual starts appraising ways of handling the stress okay so i'll start appraising how to handle the stress now again two types of handling either i will handle it by using effective strategies or i will handle it by using ineffective strategies right now what are the effective strategies we'll be discussing about this uh, later on in details but effective strategies may be by um, uh, maybe by yoga by meditation or music or by by distracting myself or some sort of uh, effective strategies okay and ineffective strategies may be by some some sort of defense mechanisms okay so uh dif- two types either either effective or either ineffective but i have to react to the situation okay and this choice of coping right Co- there are different coping mechanism my coping mechanism differs from your coping me- mechanism but how why why do different people react to different stressors in different way because it depends on the uh, on the actual amount uh, of resources one has right my resources will differ from your resources okay so it depends on the on the health and energy resources available it also depends on the locus of control what is the locus of control locus of, locus of control is the um uh, the extent of control that i have uh, on me and my environment okay that is my locus of control so it depends on that and it also depends on my social skills okay how much uh, socially skilled i am to uh, you know defend myself from a particular stressor okay So this was the cognitive appraisal model of stress.